This week on Adventures with Papa J, brought to you by Big Lip Radio, we're going to discuss and review Ahsoka. So Katano, now, for full disclosure, I'm that guy who loved Ahsoka, sitting there in a the movie theater watching the Clone Wars, as she walked off of that shuttle and introduced herself to Sky Guy. Now, I didn't really like Sky Guy or r 2 but I understood two things. I understood the movie was aimed for eight-year-olds, and I understood that uh, she had potential as a character. And uh, I believe that potential's paid off. I believe I was right about all of that stuff. Uh, but before we get into Ahsoka, let's talk about Star Wars fandom. The fandom seems to be broken into three general parts. There's, there's probably more, but three general parts. Part number one are guys who are so blinded by their love for Star Wars or perhaps existing rabid Disney fans that they cannot admit anything bad about Star Wars. They can't admit that Andor was boring and didn't quite fit the tone of Star Wars. They can't admit The Last Jedi did things that certainly wasn't Star Wars. They can't admit the third season of Mandalorian, not so hot. Uh, you got the second segment of Star Wars fans, and these guys whose love of George Lucas or perhaps their hatred of all things Disney can't recognize any of the good stuff that uh, Disney's put out. Uh, the Force Awakens was amazing. Um, my favorite Star Wars movie, by the way, don't hate me. Um, uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi, it had problems. Sure, it had problems. It was awesome. First two seasons of Mandalorian were awesome. Uh, Book of Boba Fett was really good. I wouldn't call it awesome. It was really good. They can't admit this. Now there's a third segment which I uh, consider myself <clears throat> people who are fans, maybe long time, me, myself, 1977, June, 8-year-old Papa J sitting there looking up at the movie movie screen. Couldn't believe what I was witnessing. It was amazing. And uh, new fans who maybe just discovered it on Disney, you know, and, and, and these guys are like, okay, this is good. This is not so good. We we could tell the difference between the between the wheat and the chaff. Now maybe maybe I'm giving myself too much credit, but uh, I think I'm in that third category. Uh, if I'm to uh, be honest, if I can relate to one of the first two, it would be the second category because uh, I can I can certainly relate to a lot of the criticisms. People like uh, that Star Wars Girl seventy seven or Drunk three PO. I can I can relate to the stuff that they they talk about. I think they're overly harsh. You know, just like I think uh, some people are overly forgiving. Let's talk about Ahsoka. Okay, let's talk about it. Uh, what what Ahsoka does really well is Star Wars isn't about let's backtrack. Star Wars isn't about fantastic writing. Uh, it's it's not about amazing acting. It's not about screenplays. No, Star Wars is about cinematography because uh, to me that's part of special effects and uh, uh, just uh, uh, joy and wonder. You know, are you having fun? It's fun. Even even the darkest episodes, episode three, Revenge of the Sith, super dark. Uh, Empire Strikes Back, super dark. You were never not having fun when you're watching Star Wars. Okay, and uh, and that's what Ahsoka has going for it. The first two episodes, oh, granted, we're only two episodes in. Plenty of time to get better. Plenty of time to get worse. Okay, but uh, they didn't forget the fun. I had. fun. Fun watching the show. I didn't have fun watching Andor. Andor was not fun to watch. Okay, I didn't sit there in awe, going, "Oh my God, this this feels like I'm right there in a new galaxy." I felt like I was on Earth, and I felt like I wasn't 
really having that much fun. Sorry, if you want to hate me for that, if you want to call me a Nazi. And, and why, why do we call people Nazi? Because they don't like what we like. What 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 the hell's up with that? Okay, uh, uh, it's it's insane. Um, but anyway, you didn't have fun watching Andor. The Last Jedi. Here's the problem with the Last Jedi. The Last Jedi was a good science fiction movie. Maybe, perhaps a great science fiction movie. Not a good Star Wars movie. There are things they did that weren't Star Wars. You can admit that. It's okay to admit, whoops. Okay, Luke tossing the lightsaber over his shoulder? Probably a mistake. Luke never one-on-one facing Kylo Ren and uh, being defeated in front of his apprentice? That didn't happen? I mean, that was a mistake. Yeah, Well, you could say, oh, well, Papa Jay, that happened in the first uh, trilogy that happened in a prequel trilogy. Well, why would it happen in this? Because that's Star Wars. That's what Star Wars does. Okay, you want something new? Go to Harry Potter. Go to Twilight. You probably came from there in the first place. But if you want something new, that's out there. This is how Star Wars works. Everything's supposed to echo. They're supposed to rhyme. It's supposed to feel familiar and new all at the same time. So yes, <laughs> he should have been. Defeated by Kylo Ren in front of Rey. Okay, and that would have set up such anticipation for the third one. Is Rey going to be able to maintain uh, 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 staying on the light side after watching the man who trained her, that she formed this bond with, who was supposed to be her father, get struck down right in front of her? Oh, the anticipation would have been great. Goosebumps. Would have been great. We didn't get that, okay? So we can admit that was a misstep. There's nothing wrong with admitting it, okay? You look, uh, you look over here. You'll see. I got the, I got Last Jedi action figures. I, I take what I'm given. I love what I love, and I take the rest. Cause I'm in that third segment. I can uh, love the good stuff, and I can recognize the bad stuff. But at the end of the day, it's still all Star Wars. Ahsoka is so fun. Now you need to be up to date. On uh, the Clone Wars, the Clone Wars has 133 episodes. So have I seen all those episodes as often as I've seen the Star Wars movies? <laughs> no. No, I haven't. And uh, so you have to be up to date on uh, Clone Wars. I would absolutely recommend watching it regardless because it's great. Granted, it started out a little bit rough and skewed for eight-year-olds. Okay, it was Designed for eight-year-olds. But as the, uh, what, five seasons, seven seasons, however many seasons went on, those kids grew up and the series became a little grim. (laughs) There's some really good stuff in it. And you have to be really down with Rebels. If you haven't seen the Rebels cartoon, again, I don't think it's as good as the Clone Wars, but it's still a great segment of Star Wars, Star Wars Rebels. Catch it on Disney+. Plus. You know, there's a free plug. Great stuff. Or hell, pirate it. I don't give a damn. But uh, 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 Rebels is really good stuff. And if you're an Ahsoka fan like I am, like I said, second favorite character behind Darth Vader, I've loved Ahsoka from the beginning. And they realized her potential, in my opinion. They realized her potential. So, uh, there we go. So they uh, uh, brought her into her own series. She was in Rebels. Uh, she was in uh, uh, um, Mandalorian. Good stuff. Okay, they they treated her decent. Her costume, either I'm getting used to it, or they've massaged it a little bit and made it a little bit better. Still kind of looks like she's wearing a hat <laughs> it's, instead of uh, having uh, uh, tentacles. But, hey, you know, what do you, what do you want? Either I'm getting used to it or they, they made it look a little bit better because it's not quite as uh, obnoxious or annoying as I found it in uh, The Mandalorian. Uh, so, so that's number one. Uh, number number two, yeah, there is some lazy writing. Um, Sabine, spoiler alert. If you haven't seen it, go watch it and come back. Are you back? All right. Sabine gets run through with a lightsaber. Granted, it's obviously coming in like this off to the side, so it looks like it's hitting less vital organs than when the uh, Grand Inquisitor got run through or Reva got run through. Reva, great character. Yeah, if you don't like it, don't know what to tell you. I I thought she was great. Perhaps overused, perhaps too big of a part, a little more mystery. We'll get to that. But anyway, I thought she was a great character. I thought Obi-Wan Kenobi was a great show, wonderful stuff. I mean, Disney puts out some good stuff. 
and I feel bad for people who just can't like it because, uh, okay, the social mess- messaging gets overbearing. I get it. I'm on your side on that. I, I don't like Star Wars being abused, and, uh, you know, I, that kind of sucks. But still, there's great stuff. Um, um, eh. Does it mess with canon? Not directly. It kind of changes what we think canon is. You know, our head canon. You know, I sense a, I sense a presence here. A presence I haven't felt since. And then we finish it. Mustafar. Right? Well, Obi-Wan changed that. Now a uh, planet escapes my... Uh, the name of the planet escapes my brain right now. But, okay, so now it's 10 years ago. Instead of 20 years ago on this planet. Instead of uh, Mustafar. And granted, you can only go so far with that before Darth Vader is going well. I sense a presence I haven't felt since last week. You know, <laughs> that won't work, okay? So uh, so anyway, it's kind of messed with our head cannon a little bit, but not directly with actual cannon itself. Uh, so anyway, uh, Sabine gets run through with the lightsaber, and what amounts to probably three days later, she's back in action. Lazy writing. There are ways to show somebody getting defeated without having to run them through with a lightsaber. I mean, they killed Qui-Gon. Qui-Gon's a stronger Jedi than uh, Soka, in my opinion, or than Sabine, certainly, and a uh, uh, stronger Jedi than uh, than Reva. Again, that's my opinion. But uh, it killed him getting run through with a lightsaber. Why wouldn't it kill Reva? Why wouldn't it kill the Grand Inquisitor? Who knows? Lazy writing, but Star Wars is full of lazy writing. If you're going to get upset with uh, Soka because the writing is lazy, well, I mean... Look, when the Death Star came out of hyperspace, why didn't you just destroy Yavin? You don't have to destroy the moon. When you blow up the freaking planet, the moon's going to be destroyed instantly anyway. They didn't have to wait 30 minutes to go around the planet and then shoot at, the, at Yavin. It's, it's a storytelling device, you know, and you could call it sloppy writing. That's fine. The ad the walkers. Who doesn't love the walkers? I love the walkers. They're cool. They're fun to watch. That's why it works. But a stiff side wind is going to blow them right, right over. Okay? We don't care because it's fun. Okay, Ahsoka. All right, we might start to care about people getting run through with a lightsaber. That's the biggest complaint I have about this. So we uh, we might start care about that because it's happening too much. So we might be starting to care about that. But uh, 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 So the writing's a little bit lazy. The acting, not great. No Star Wars acting is great. I was going to pick up some power converters at the Tashi station. Look, the horrible acting is a hallmark of Star Wars, with the possible exception of, ironically, The Last Jedi um, and uh, Rogue One. Okay, Good acting in both of those movies, probably Empire Strikes Back, but everything else, the acting's trash. We're fine with it. We don't show up to Star Wars for uh, superior acting. We, we just don't. Um, so uh, uh, so the uh, writing suspect, the acting, not great. And it stands out because Rosario Dawson is a great actress. We've all seen her act much better in other projects. So I'm going to assume that's the directing. What do you want? But, uh, okay, so so that's out of the way. What's, what's another complaint I have? The costumes look a little bit like cosplayers. The costumes are a bit too new, a bit too shiny. Uh, they kind of biffed the whole lived-in look, although the uh, city and I I'm forgetting the planet Ezra's from. Uh, anyway, uh, the city, a little too new. The costume's a little too new. Uh, doesn't have the lived-in look like it's supposed to. I can overlook that. I can forgive that, especially since, hey, it's the first two uh, first two episodes. Who knows where it's going to go from here. Um, I like the fact that uh, there's different uh, motivations for going to the uh to the uh, unknown part of the galaxy, or is it a separate galaxy? I don't know. They kind of refer to it either way. Um, uh, they found the map. Uh, Sabine steals the map because she wants to find Ezra, her her buddy. Okay, and they set up the relationship like a, a brother sister relationship, which is good. Not every relationship has to be romantic. So the, it's a brother sister relationship. She wants to go to that area to find. Ezra, who disappeared with Grand Admiral Thrawn. Okay, Grand Admiral Thrawn, if he comes back, uh, he's going he's gonna to muster forces. The war is going to start all over again. And uh, uh, the, the uh, Re- New Republic isn't set up for war. They're trying to be a peacetime outfit so they don't have a huge uh, uh, armada. So, so they got to keep Thrawn from coming back. 
And there's a dual motivation because she wants to find Ezra. Ahsoka, Sabine wants to find Ezra. Ahsoka wants to find uh, Thrawn. Okay, so it's cool. There's a little bit of conflict, okay? They're, they're going in the same direction, for, but for different reasons. So it's going to be cool to see how that plays out. Sabine, I don't remember her being Force-sensitive in Rebels, but again, I've seen all of Rebels, but I haven't seen it a thousand times like I have the movies. So who knows? I mean, they refer to her as a former student of Ahsoka. Damn it, I just don't, I just don't remember that. But um, anyway, uh, Sabine is now Force-sensitive, so she's going to be a Jedi Mandalorian. Okay, before the end of this, I have the feeling. Uh, that'll be interesting because the Jedi and Mandalorian are enemies. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. See, you can be interesting. Uh, so anyway, uh, what do I give it out of five? I give it a three and a half right now. That may raise as we watch it more. Uh, it's, it's fun. Most importantly, it's fun. I don't show up to Star Wars to learn a valuable life lesson. I don't show up to Star Wars to uh, uh, hear social commentary. I just don't. If you want to put it in, do like George did and bury it. Okay? It's, it's, it, it ends up being a show about good versus evil. You can bury the rest. Who cares? Okay? Uh, uh, George claims to have put in stuff that may or may not have been in there. Ewoks represented uh, 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 Vietnam somehow. I don't know how. I still can't put it together. I'm 55 years old. Yesterday, I'm old. What am I going to quit talking about Star Wars? What am I, I going to quit collecting? I'm 55 years old. Never. Never when I run my Harley into the back of that milk truck. I'm going to have all kinds of cool stuff to leave behind. So you want to be my friend. And also, if you want to be my friend, you want to check us out. Big Lip Radio Wednesdays now. Between 5.30 and 6 Arizona time, wherever you get your streaming stuff. I don't care if it's Twitch, Kick, uh, Facebook, uh, wherever you stream your stuff, you'll be able to stream our live podcast and then catch it the next day, the audio version. If you're the guy who drives around uh, listening to podcasts, goes to work listening to podcasts, it's available then. Go to BigLipperRadio.com. Thank you guys for uh, checking this out. Three and a half out of five, probably going to go higher upon repeated watches. And I will see you next time on Adventures with Papa Jay.